Okay, everybody. Mr. Gazzoni, will you call me in the order? Mrs. Kapaski? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? Present. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mission statement, Mr. Porter, please. The Austin Town Local School District is a united community with a proud legacy and a progressive approach to education. We provide an inspiring education that strengthens and prepares our students for unlimited future opportunities. Thank you, Vince. Good evening, everyone. At this time, we'd like to honor Dr. Stellers and his family, if they can come up here. Dr. Stellers passed away, and we'd like his family to come up and be recognized by the board, please. For those in the community that don't know Dr. Sellers are in the audience, Dr. Sellers was a board member in the Austin Town Schools, but also an employee and a great contributor as a community member and an alumni of Fitch. So at this time, can you take a moment and have a moment of silence to pray for him and his family, please? Thank you. Just a little bit about Dr. Stellers. Um, I did not know him as a teacher in Austin Town Schools. I didn't know Dr. Stellars when he went and became the uh, president of the Access Board. Access is our TA site that runs all of our internet. Uh, did not know Dr. Stellars when he worked for um, many other entities, even at the university. I didn't meet him until I became a superintendent here and he came on the Board of Education. But in his short time as a board member, he dr dramatically impacted me. Uh, we were very fortunate to have him on our team when we were building our two elementary buildings. And a lot of people may not know, so I do got to tell some good stories about him. When we were in the process of building our elementaries, uh, obviously Dr. Stellars was heavily involved with technology and loved technology. He actually started a te technology committee with Mr. Sternberger, seeing him come up, as a board member. They actually went and traveled and looked at other districts that had new buildings and what kind of technology that we wanted to bring to the Austin Town Schools. Like a great team player, he involved teachers along that way. His wife is a former teacher here at Fitch. Um, we wanted the teacher's input to decide on what we were going to do in our building for technology. That is the reason why we have such great technology in our elementary building. We were one of the first districts to put touchscreen TVs that actually move up and down for the teachers to adjust for their height, but also adjust for the children's height. We actually were the first district to put in uh, document cameras that scanned any document a teacher needed that can go through the computer and be projected onto the uh, touchscreen TV. So I really appreciate his technology and his innovation for being a person that's been out of education for some years he was. He still is very innovative. And for me personally, where he was a, a great mentor, um, and I don't even know if you, you knew this, but he used to send me letters. And in those letters, he would have recommendations of things that, either something that was like a cork that he thought was a little out of place, or something that we needed to really address and look at. And I really never even told him this. I looked at every one of those letters and considered every one of those things that either we needed to adjust, think about, or I would go back to him and tell him, Doc, that's something we've been doing for years. I can't change that. But he was very impactful to me and as a superintendent and also very supportive of what we've done as a board of education. And as he um, left the board, he still was very supportive, served on uh, many committees. One of the things that he did, I think, that was very impactful is he served on our uh, Hall of Fame committee, that we had some trouble with it, and there was a group of uh, veteran 
Fitch uh, alumni and Fitch administrators that were asked to come back and resurrect that Hall of Fame committee, and he was a part of that, making it a great uh, Hall of Fame that we have now. So on behalf of the Board of Education and the administrative team, we want to thank you for his time that he was with us and bless you and your family and moving forward. And this is a little token of our appreciation. If you can grab that, Jill. It is a blanket from the Historical Society with all of the Austintown schools on it and, and historic buildings in the Austintown community. So for his family and friends, thank you for uh, lending Dr. Stellas to us over the uh, many years in the Austin schools and his time and how he's impacted our district. So hopefully when you drive by uh, either one of those elementaries on Idaho Road, you'll uh, definitely know how much he's impacted us and think of him every time we drive by it. God bless you. And this is his wife, Carol. I, I forgot to introduce her. This is Dr. Stellar's wife, Carol. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming out. And like, like in school, they called ahead and asked for an excusal. So we are going to excuse the family now when we're done with their ceremony. They do have some things that they have to get to. So thank you so much. At this time, Board of Education, I'd like to invite Doug Hiscox up, the Assistant Superintendent at the Mahoney County Educational Service Center, and Tracy Hostetler, the Superintendent. Is he doing a presentation here? No, that's going to come after. That's just me. The two pictures i got to show you there. Uh, we have a great partnership with the ESC for many years. Um, one of the ventures that, that's come about uh, probably about three years ago, the legislators changed the law that we have to have a business advisory council. And we decided as a board then to partner with the ESC and do it in a collaboration. So Doug and Trace are here to present on the business advisory council. Well, thanks for inviting us here this evening. Uh, one of the responsibilities of, of being in charge of the BAC is to make sure that we report out to each of the board boards uh, of education that, that we represent. The, as Vince stated, uh, it was about three years ago that the legislators put together this piece of legislation that said each district had to have a, a business advisory council, which is, wasn't really a new concept, but it, it, it formalized it. It made it something that was more than just a compliance thing. So um, in the law, it, it allowed educational service centers to represent a large group of districts so there wasn't duplication. So the ESC put together the uh, platform for it. There are 21 districts that uh, have aligned with uh, the ESC's uh, Business Advisory Council and Austin Town was one of, those, one of those districts. So since that was put in place, we've had um, a year and a half of meetings, which was more of just kind of trying to understand what the workforce development looked like. Uh, the committee itself was made up of uh, employers of different businesses throughout the area. Our footprint is a little bit of Portage County, all of Mahoney County, a little bit of Trumbull, and a little bit of uh, Columbiana County. So it's a fairly large footprint. It represents all, all the businesses that want to be part of it, uh, which is about 55 different partnerships uh, with employers. We also have uh, the chambers involved, the cha uh, regional chamber, and um, the workforce development community out there that has adult education, those kinds of things. That makes up the body of the committee. Uh, about 36 members, anybody can be a part of that if they want to. Uh, there's about 15 of them that are really dedicated and come to every meeting. The others come whenever they can. We meet once a month, uh, the fourth Wednesday of every month at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, boards of Education are welcome to come. Superintendents are welcome to come. We send out the invitations each month uh, about the week before. But we're at the point now where we're, we're done looking at uh, what is happening in our, our area? What, what businesses uh, 
what kind of employment is there, what kind of career pathways are there, what are the future needs and so forth. There was a, a pretty extensive process that we went through. And now the document that uh, Vince passed out is the uh, formal action plan that was put together after the year and a half of study. So at, when you have time to look through that, you'll see that there were, different, there were steps along the way where we collected information and formalized what it is that the EAC wanted to do. And, and mainly the, uh, what they decided to do was to become a platform for communicating to the, uh, to the districts and connecting educators and the business workforce development people together and kind of change the conversation from everything must be uh, directed towards a four-year uh, degree to there are a lot of other opportunities out there that, that uh, lead to different pathways and careers that are good paying jobs. So out of that, uh, there needs to be some action. Well, the action that's taken place up to this point is that we're developing a, uh, the Business Advisory Council is developing a website that will connect employers to educators and to students and parents, all four sectors. And that website will be uh, released February 4th uh, to the districts that are aligned with us right now to give the teachers and educators, educators, uh, parents, and students all access to that website, which gives them uh, a platform to look at what jobs and careers are out there in this area. Uh, the second thing is that it will uh, have a, a, a second component that will be launched in uh, uh, Feb late February, which will connect the business community to the, the student itself. And it'll talk about jobs that are available, apprenticeships that are available, mentorships that are available, and those kinds of things. And then the third thing that we're really excited about is, is that there'll be a, a, an app that students will be given their senior year that'll connect them uh, to both of those platforms for two years beyond their graduation. So if they're starting down a pathway that uh, maybe they want to change, maybe they started into a four-year path through uh, secondary education, and they've really thought, well, this isn't going to work for me. It'll reconnect them back to the information that they had as juniors and seniors and kind of give them some more directions to look at. So those are the three main components. We also have uh, uh, educator and workforce development going on this summer where educators will be allowed to apply for these uh, kind of 40-hour uh, apprenticeships during the summertime where they can go and experience what happens in the workplace. Um, we have summer boot camps for students this summer for middle school and high school kids where they'll actually go and visit some of the, the different kinds of uh, uh, business opportunities, career opportunities for them. Uh, so those are some of the things that are kind of planned right now. Um, key component of all of that is the career counselors that the ESC has been able to utilized to kind of get these messages out and to formalize uh, these activities and so forth. But uh, we're, we're about a year into that, the action part of it now, and uh, we just needed to report out to you to let you know what's going on. Uh, Tracy, when she came on board as the superintendent this, this past year, has uh, jumped right in there with the BAC and is becoming a very vital, vital part of that communication piece. So. I don't know if you want to add anything. No, um, you know, just a little bit more on the app, and I know your time is valuable. I'll go quickly. The app is really, really amazing for kids because it, it really meets our governor's uh, plans as well as our state superintendent's strategic plan to monitor where kids are two years after they graduate. It's a very difficult thing to do. I have a 20-year-old and a 22-year-old. They don't want their school to know where they're at. They sort of went, you know, on their own, and they think it's silly to look back. So this app is going to really help us track where kids are, and then redirect them if, if they think that they're going to go into nursing school. And at middle of freshman year at Youngstown State, they decided they'd rather go into another field. Then we can sort of, with this app, do some geofencing and some tracking and some push notifications and track their whereabouts and redirect them. So ultimately, our goal is to fill the void of open jobs in our region that aren't being filled because we're not producing enough skilled people to do that. So that's ultimately our goal is to look out for the kids in the valley and, and we're just beyond thrilled that this is coming to fruition. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. President. I failed to introduce Marie Dockery. Marie, you want to come up? Marie is a employee here at the Austin Schools as a counselor. Come on up, because you need to get on TV. 
but she also serves as a board member. She's the board member for these two folks that were just here. Thank you. So, Thank you. Sorry, I didn't introduce you when they came up. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Ray's next. Perfect timing. I have the honor of recognizing two really impressive freshmen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, my purpose for being here tonight actually is to recognize two very impressive freshmen. And these students, um, with, at the request of their teacher last year, participated in a poster contest. With, um, and it's, uh, the co it was in collaboration with the Coalition for Drug-Free Mahoning County, along with the Knights of Columbus. And we have two freshmen, they, they, they created these posters in eighth grade, and they, they won the award, so naturally I have the honor and privilege of recognizing them. Um, and one is an international poster award winner, and the other one is a state poster award winner. So it is my honor to recognize Luke Lasta. Would you come up here? And this is his poster. Thank you. And, and also Cassidy Blessing, and her poster is an international award winner. I'd like to congratulate these students. I know as freshmen especially, and their message is so profound um, and very beneficial to all of us that I, you know, it is my honor to recognize both of them. So thank you so much. And I know um, the coalition, I reached out to the coalition today, and also Knights of Columbus, so they would like to come to Fitch to recognize them. So we'll find out more information and these students said they have copies of their posters, but they don't have the originals. So we are going to try to find out exactly where these posters are on display at. So thank you again. Congratulations. Next up, item number eight, for some community and staff involvement recognition. First up, uh, Mr. Ken Jackiebeck and Mr. Jack Kidd. This is our annual award for Toys for Tots. Uh, I want to thank the administration, the board, faculty, the students and families of Austin Town for donating so much to Toys for Tots. I didn't have a chance to do the report last year. In 2017, 8,433 children received toys in Mahoning and Trumbull County. Toys collected were 34,465 toys throughout the two counties. I'm the coordinator for Toys for Tots with the Marine Corps Reserves, and I respons I'm responsible for the pickups of 204 sites out of 237. So I have 29 great volunteers, and this year, Toys for Tots, uh, we collected 31,750 toys, and that's from donations and money, cash money that Toys for Tots receives when they go out and buy extra toys. So every kid receives two to three, maybe four toys. Number of children this year receiving toys was 10,456, over 200 more kids, needy families out through Mahoning and Trumbull County. And we have a contest in Austin Town Local Schools our fourth year, 
AIS won it in 15 and 16, Austin Town Fitch won it in 2017 as the top collector, who, which school collects the most toys. So at this time, Mr. Kidd's going to give the presentation. We have a Toys for Tots plaque, and I have the honor of giving this out for the PTA this year. It's the rotating trophy that the PTA gives out to the school. And the, the new plates are being made today. They'll be on there tomorrow. Jack? I've been doing Toys for Tots in the schools for three years, and it didn't take me long to figure out just how generous our students here in Austintown are. This year we had another contest, and it was tight till a week before we were due for our last pickup, December the 7th. And then all of a sudden, the school whose name is on this plaque took off. So at this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Ben Baldner to come up here and accept this plaque for the Austintown Middle School. They ran away with it at the end. That's great, thanks guys for your help. Next up, uh, Kristen O'Neill, Kristen and James for some veterans recognition. Um, my name is Kristen O'Neill, I'm an Austin Town Fitch teacher and I'm involved in a lot of the veter veterans programs in the area and I have been grateful enough to be 33 years with the man to my left who anytime I've ever asked him um, to do anything for our veterans he, he jumped on it. Um, my husband so expertly built um, this beautiful cabinet in the halls of Fitch High School in honor of two <coughs> of our class of 1962 Vietnam veterans. Um, one to the left happens to be my father. Um, then again this year they asked my husband to um, build a plaque to put 18, um, the 18 KIAs from the Austin Town community um, and all I did was ask them. So my husband probably won't want me to tell you this but you know he works like 10 hours a day and every single night for months and months and months he'd go over to his shop and he would be there. I'd actually call him on the phone and say, are you okay, are you okay? Because you never know what could happen, you know? And he would go there and I'd always say to him, Jim, you know, you need to take a break. Do you need to take a break? And he'd say, no. He said, I am so honored to do this. And he said, I'm, this was just profound to me. He goes, I can't believe that the Austin Town community asked me to do this. And he was so honored and I was so proud of him and I just felt he needed recognized and I wanted to thank him for all that he does for our veterans in this community. And um, just for thanking him for being the last, part of the last 33 years of my life. Uh, just, just a little quick background of it. About a year and a half ago, we started researching the names uh, we wanted to honor veterans to put up on our, in our school somewhere. So we found 17. Since the plaque was put up a couple days before Veterans Day, we've actually added a, another World War II. Uh, Jim O'Neill did a fantastic job. He's a master carpenter. This board is made to add to. Uh, hopefully we don't have to add anybody, but we laid it out so if we do find a Korean War uh, a person that died in combat, we could add it. So it, it's, we could adjust on that, that board. Also, he made the crosses that we put out for uh, Veterans Day, uh, and the students uh, helping, students supporting veterans 
uh, were the ones that put out all the flags at all the schools for Veterans Day, and they helped put the crosses out. So they're going to be back out again for uh, Memorial Day. So I want to thank Jim for all his work. None of this was any cost to the Board of Education. A couple of families donated everything. Thank you. Um, I do need to recognize that um, Baird Brothers, um, um, Steve Stack and Scott Baird, um, every time we needed wood, my husband would go to them and they, they actually would take him from barn to barn. They spent hours going barn to barn to barn because Mr. Baird and um, Mr. Stack would say, oh, no, no, we got to find the perfect wood. And so they'd find some pieces and they'd be like, nope, not good enough. So they'd go to another barn and I'd be, he'd be hours at Baird Brothers. And he said that's because they weren't satisfied till they found the perfect wood. They could not be here today. They're at a, in Florida at a um, home and garden show, which I thought was nice. But anyways, I, they knew we were going to recognize them, and I did meet, need to mention that um, they have just been awesome throughout, I mean, thousands of dollars worth of wood. Um, so what I want to do now is um, I want to call up um, Anna Ramos, please. Anna Ramos is a student at Fitch High School. She's a 10th grader, and I'm so excited because we get to keep her two more years. Um, she is part of the Student Serving Veterans Program. And I'm hoping this spring that um, she decides to run to be president. And um, I've got to know these kids pretty well, just, um, just supporting them. That's kind of all, all that I do. And um, I, I've gotten pretty tight. Um, this one here <laughs> comes to me weekly. And she has a whole list of things, all these ideas. And I look at it and I'm like, I, I kind of almost have a heart attack because, I mean, it's like a ton of stuff, you know. And um, just today she walked in tonight and she's rattling off these ideas, you know, already. So um, she has just been the most, most awesome young lady when it comes to students serving, serving veterans and the support that she gives um, our veterans and to our, our Purple Star, Star kids. And I, I can't thank her enough. Um, she represents a whole group of kids, and um, so she came to represent them. But um, I'm so glad we get to keep her for two more years because um, she's got some incredible things that she wants to do, and it's going to take some time to get them done. So she'll be with us and can, and can implement those. So thank you, sweetheart. Oh, no, she's in 11th, so we're running out of time. Um, Okay, um, the next person is Stephanie Mulligan, and would Mrs. Mulligan please come up too? Um, this is one of our military families in the community, and this is Steph Stephanie Mulligan and her mother. Um, Stephanie has two brothers in the military. She, he has, she has one in the Air Force, and she has one that is a combat engineer in the Army, and she is also dating a Marine, <laughs> so um, very military. And this is one of our military families, and they're involved with the Purple Star program. And um, I just wanted to say that's another um, project that we're, that we're building every day, and she is part of that. And um, I just thought they needed to be recognized, and they're here to represent our Purple Star families. Thank you. President, real quick, just to uh, recognize Kristen and, and her team of folks at, at Fitch that work on the Purple Star uh, Room. We actually had the Howell Department of Education, the head of the Department of Education, and the outreach for the, I'm going to say it wrong, the Coast, Coast Guard? Yeah. National Guard, thank you. National Guard came and in, in, uh, had a luncheon at the Purple Star Room and was just astounded of how wonderful that the committee has uh, what they presented as a room, they told us we are the only school district in the country that has a dedicated room to veterans. Um, other districts have done some other things for veterans, but we're the only one that has a dedicated room, and that's because of Kristen and her team, and Jim Panks a part of that team, and Chris is a part of it, and Brittany, and I know of many other members. But that's a great recognition from the Department of Education, so thank you for what you do for our veterans every day and all of our students. OK, 
Okay, for item nine, Brittany, you want to take it from here for staff of the month recognition? Uh, the following were selected by their coworkers this month, um, I'm sorry, as the January staff members of the month. So based on their performance in December, they were selected to be January staff members of the month. Um, please step forward and to be recognized if you are present. Uh, from AES, Holly Fay and Kathy Schmidt. From AIS, Steve Krispinski and Desiree Bailey. From AMS, Jeff Gessler and April Ferguson. From Fitch, Mia Pizzullo and Vicki Burton. From Transportation, Doug Wilson. And um, from Central Office, Erica Seafried. Come up. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Brittany. Item number 10 for building reports, starting with Fitch High School. Mr. Zach Barson. Good evening. All right, I just want to tell you guys about what's going on at Fitch. Uh, it's actually a pretty exciting day tomorrow. We actually have the U.S. Army coming in and bringing a trailer, parking it at the school. And anybody that's interested in becoming a U.S. soldier in general, it doesn't matter which one, we're proud of them all. They can come in and they can actually do simulations in this trailer. They can actually drive a helicopter, Humvees, and put on paratrooper uniforms. So they'll be there all day tomorrow. They're actually setting up tonight. And then tomorrow night's another exciting event at our school. We have boys basketball versus Canfield. And at halftime, uh, the administration team from all of Austin Town will be playing our Austin Town wheelchair basketball team at halftime. So come out and have some fun. Uh, as of last week, our girls' basketball team was ranked 13th in the state of Ohio. Uh, next week also, we have a staff for student basketball game on Friday. And then February 19th through the 22nd, we are having another Spirit Week for winter sports, followed by a pep rally on Friday, February 22nd. Uh, just recently, we had our fifth annual Creative Arts Night at the high school, and we want to thank Mr. Steve Ward and all of his students for putting together such an awesome event. It went really, really well. And then just recently we just had our jazz band and dessert night and we want to thank Wes O'Connor, um, parent Brad Gessner, and everyone that volunteered and helped out. It was a huge success. Uh, moving on to curriculum, uh, we're actually excited. We were chosen as one of the only schools in Ohio to be a part of a new math program. It's a pilot program for modeling and reasoning. And basically what that is, is it's going to get our seniors ready for student-led academics and get them ready for college and career readiness. So we're really excited to be a pilot program. Uh, important dates on February 20th, there will be no school for freshmen, sophomores, or seniors. That's the day that our juniors are taking the ACT at the school. And then on February 23rd, our annual Band Boosters Spaghetti Dinner, and we would hope to see everyone there. We appreciate all your support. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Austin Town Middle School, Mr. Baldner. Second appearance tonight. Uh, good evening. A couple of announcements from the middle school for, uh, for tonight. First of all, as Mr. Barson said, um, we want to big, give a big thank you to uh, all those involved at our jazz and dessert event with the high school from last Saturday. Um, from what I heard, it was an even bigger turnout than last year. Um, so from the middle school, Jeremy, Jeremy McLean is our band director, and then Mr. O'Connor from the high school, and then Mark Papino, I know, directs the alumni band. So again, a very successful and fun event that was had here at the middle school over the weekend. Um, next month, I believe it is, we actually have one of our 8th grade language arts teachers, Angela Yeoman. She's being honored. Um, she was selected as the OCTELA 2019 Outstanding English Language Arts Educator for Middle School. So we have a group of language arts teachers going with her to receive that award. Um, I believe it's either end of February or early March. So we're very proud of Angela and her achievements with her students. Um, this Friday, weather pending, um, we have been selected at AMS again to take part in the NAEP testing, the National Assessment of Educational Progress. 
um, which that data is used for our nation's report card. So I know AMS has been selected in the past, but we have about 50 eighth graders who are randomly selected to take a reading or math test that again, that data will be used for our nation's report card. And we do have a makeup date in place um, pending weather. So we're excited and proud to have our students represent our uh, great nation in um, taking this test. Um, on another note, we do have our second quarter words assemblies coming up. We have a lot of great uh, achievements to celebrate from the second quarter. And again, due to the weather, we keep having to push that back. Um, one other thing with the weather, um, we still are in some need of boots and shoes at the middle school level. Uh, we have a lot of kids that walk in the snow to school. They come in with soaking wet socks and shoes and then are trying to learn throughout the day. So any donations of socks and shoes and boots and scarves, um, we would greatly appreciate. We're pretty good on coats and gloves and, and hats. There's a lot of local churches and the staff has stepped up and donate a lot of those items this year. So um, as we continue through winter, we're definitely looking for some more donations. Um, that's it for the middle school. Thank you, Ben. From Austin Town Intermediate, Mr. Papagallo. Happy New Year, just wanted to wish you guys, it's been I know January 1st has come and gone. It's been so, this month's been going so fast. But um, uh, this Friday we have a World Read Aloud Day. Uh, you guys are all incorrigibly invited to come read to a few rooms. I know you received an email, but we'd love to see you out. Um, we just finished up our second uh, Falcon Leadership Assemblies today. Uh, it's where two students of each bipod were recognized for showing outstanding leadership. We had last week a ribbon cutting ceremony for our leveled library that is officially open and on, and on its way. I'd like to recognize Kim Friesen, Kim Delbane, Nancy Bellotta, Ashley Lines, Melissa Mowry, and all the people who help work many, many long hours in getting this uh, library ready for our students. And we got a lot going on in the next couple weeks. We have a book fair coming up, candy fundraiser, a bingo night, staff versus uh, student basketball game. Our building just received uh, a 3D printer. It's pretty exciting. Uh, Mrs. Chine uh, won it at a competition. Uh, she and some of the staff members will be receiving some professional development and, uh, on how to utilize it best in our building. And I'd like to recognize the custodial staff. Uh, the weather has been horrendous the last couple weeks, and they've done an outstanding job keeping the sidewalk safe and inside the foyer area uh, it, less water. And um, lastly, um, I know uh, Mrs. Thorndike is going to be coming up, but uh, she's been coming in the building more and more, and she's a strong woman, recovering quickly, and uh, I look forward for many months of working with her. So I know she takes her minute to come up, but she'll be here in a minute. Mrs. Sandy Thorndike reporting on Austin Town Elementary. This is going to make me cry. Okay. <laughs> Not the first time. It's been an interesting time at the elementary building. We finished winter benchmarking in iReady and all of the little tests that we give the kids to see how they're growing and moving forward so we can decide what we're going to teach next and what we need to renew. First grade has taken advantage of this really lousy weather in the last couple of weeks. They had frozen day last week where obviously there was a lot of Elsa and Anna and everybody else. They went outside and dealt with snow. Uh, the PTA helped us, they had snow cones. It was a real fun day for the first grade. They're moving forward in science into animals in winter. So they're taking advantage of this weather in first grade. Uh, second and seventh reading program is tomorrow, if the weather holds, we shall see. And they're all looking forward to that. Next week is the 100th day of school. We're just not sure which day next week is the 100th day of school. It depends on the weather this week. So next week during the 100th day of school, we're 100th day of school week. We're having spirit week. Um, it was supposed to be this week, but the weather sort of pushed it back a bit. During the 100th day of school, there'll be lots of fun activities, including this year a writing competition geared to each grade level. And they've asked me to help judge, so we'll see how that goes. Um, which is really kind of interesting. We've, we've already seen some really neat whole class activities, some individual things, some things coming in from home. So we're waiting to see how the kids do with their writing projects moving forward. The um, 
end of the trimester is March 1st, so there'll be a lot of celebrations coming up that the kids will enjoy. Between now and the end of the trimester, we've got Valentine's Day. There will be room parties, and during that week, we will have the um, Scholastic Book Fair. One of the things that I'm looking forward to continuing in the elementary building is something called the HOPE program. It's a program for Mercy Health, and it stands for Health and Opioid Prevention Program. And the kids will be learning about healthy lifestyles and about how to avoid some of the pitfalls of drugs. And it's geared to kindergarten, first and second grade students, and it's also aligned with the Ohio standards for English language arts. So I'm real excited. I've been working real closely with the folks from Mercy Health on this, and I think it's going to be very interesting. We do have a conference night coming up at the elementary building, and that'll be March 7th. And I want to take this second to thank the Board of Education and everybody else for their patience over these last six months. Thank you. Item number 11, on to department reports. Mr. Rick Zimmerman, Grounds and Facilities Director. Good evening, everyone. Um, I was asked to bring up quick about a little bit of snow we had a couple week, a week and a half ago or so. Um, I'd like to bring attention to guys and girls that were here. I had about 13 that were here three days in a row. Um, cleaning up for us real good. Maintenance was Dave Laurie, Evan Byers, Keith Lemke. Custodial, we had Jason Lean-Kew, Tom DeLuca, Emily Zockel, Rita Suze, Karen McIntyre, Tracy Parker, Kathy Schmidt. Grounds crew was out, Mark Miller and Chad Aikens. Um, Monday night, Mr. Carl Luca and myself and Jaden Carr shoveled pathways to 60 some vehicles in the transportation department so the bus drivers couldn't get out. And on Tuesday, Paul Lemke, <coughs> excuse me, and two of our mechanics, Dave Robineau and Chuck Custer, came out with about 12 bus drivers, get them all fired up, shoveled off out of the way so we could plow that out and the buses were ready. Uh, plus they spent a lot of hours out here doing a lot of good and I think they did a real nice job uh, this past weekend with the Hepner and uh, Sunday wrestling they were out again and the roads look very nice, the sidewalks are clear, trying to keep it as safe as we can for the kids. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Mr. Ventresco, technology. Uh, good evening. Everyone's thrown out all kinds of numbers, so I had, I had some numbers of my, from my, myself. I really wanted to thank my tech team because we take care of, this is just the PCs and stuff with keyboards. 846 PCs, 300 iPads, 1,000 virtual devices, and 3,000 uh, Chromebooks. That doesn't count all this stuff and the network. I do that for fun. Uh, I really want to thank my deans and uh, the principals, uh, like Mr. Barsh and Mr. Del Torrio, for helping us out. What they do with the Chromebooks and the kids, couldn't do it without them. Um, Briefly, from 2016 to 2018, I just finished up a project that um, the board helped me support 100%, and that was updating uh, our network facilities at Fitch High School and Austin Town Middle School to kind of uh, mirror what they look like at AIS and AES. So at the time, AES and AIS, they had the, the newest stuff. And I used... Uh, E-rate category two monies to update Fitch and AMS so that they mirror the same level of technology that we have at AIS and AES. Um, that, that was important because Fitch was sitting around 2002 technology. Even AMS, you said, oh, AMS is brand new. 2004, 2005 technology. So they were, do, they were due for an update and that brings me 
to the next, next part of that project, which was um, we updated all of our Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi district-wide, instead of having two different systems, it's all, it's all one system now. Um, we'll put that to the test here shortly when we, when we uh, gear up for online testing. Uh, finally, in that same project, we updated our cores. That's the thing that makes the internet go. And that was important. It, it, I struggled to get that scheduled because for some reason we can't go 24 hours without having internet access in the district. So that was uh, a lot of uh, emails going back and forth and trying to schedule, hey, I need to take the internet down for a day. No, we're, we have this going on. We don't have any school that day. We still had, we still had stuff going on. Um, Our internet access is filtered here. It always has been. It changes with the times just because of the level, level of technology that's out there. I think we're a little bit behind all the time. We're moving to a new filter product. It's called Securely, which happens, uh, oddly enough, on the 30th. We're going to make our move to that, so hold on. Uh, one thing I could say about the Rocket, the product that we have now, it, I know, I know the things it can't do, so I know what we're in for. Securely is a new, new technology, and uh, we'll be moving to that on the 30th. Um, I wanted to thank Mr. Ballner, because AMS piloted a product called NetOp Vision in their, their school, which is a product that teachers use in their classrooms to monitor Chromebooks. Uh, they piloted it for 30 days, and I, I, I don't think they took the whole 30 day. Tryout. They, they said they wanted it. We pushed it out on all the Chromebooks. They use it uh, grade six through seven now, and uh, it's a big success. Uh, I think in November of 2018, we talked about we wanted some changes made on the website. Has anybody checked out the website today? It's done. The new template's up. Uh, so for the updates, if we have school closing, that's all back in business. Okay. Um, so that so that runs much better on a smartphone, which, which is what, what, the, what the goal was. Um, finishing up, we replaced our initial fleet of Chromebooks that we bought in 2013, 2012, 2013, at Austin Town Intermediate School. And we, we just finished placing their new fleet. And then finally, I guarantee you I could get you into progress book. Okay? There's no reason for a student 6 through 12 not to get into progress book. I talk to parents or people in student services every day. It's, it's, it's a great part of my day because I know it's going to work. I, I know there's an answer there. And it gets kids into their, into their progress book. So a new thing that's out there, that, and this works now, it wasn't working previously, is students can use their Google credentials to sign into progress book, which is really nice because then they, don't, they only have to use one set of credentials to, to, to get access to their, to their progress book. Um, and that's all working really, really well. If you can't get into Progress Book, call someone in Student Services. If they can't help you, I will help you. I guarantee that it works. And because uh, electronic uh, report cards are coming out, and you need to get into your Progress Book. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Tom and Janet Polish. Good evening. Just to give a quick update to the board and to the parents and students, um, testing is right around the corner um, with the state regulated test that we have to give. We will be starting in February with the Ohio English Language Proficiency Assessment in which all our English language students take. Um, alternative assessments will be in February, March, and April. Um, those are tests given to st students with superior um, sup significant cognitive disabilities. And then in the spring, all our third through high school students will be taking the spring English language arts test online. And our testing window is right before spring break, March 25th through April 12th. So three weeks of testing there. And then after spring break, our third through high school students will be taking the math, science, and social studies test. Uh, for three weeks when we return from spring break. So looking forward to um, some testing. I know the kids probably are not, but um, we're preparing our kids and hoping to get through all the standards so they're well prepared. So just to give an overview and good luck to all them preparing for the test. Thank you.
Okay. Okay. Item number 12, upon the recommendation of the treasurer, approve the agenda of the January 28th, 2019 Board of Education regular January session. So moved. Second. Mrs. Kopaski? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. For item 13, nobody has signed up for public comment segment number one. On to number 14, upon the recommendation of the treasurer, approve the following items A through F by consent action. So moved. Second. Vote. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mrs. Kopaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Item 15, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the administrative salary schedules for 2019 through 2021. So moved. Second. Vote. Mrs. Kopaski? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Item 16, <coughs> upon the recommendation of the treasurer, accept the following donations. A. Listed below A through C. Second. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Item 17. Upon the recommendation of the treasurer, Approve the resolution, whereas the Austin Town Board of Education hereby consents to access sharing information and data with Management Council pursuant to the agreement, Exhibit A, and whereas the board finds and determines that access, MCOECN, have legitimate educational interest in the information that is to be shared by access with Moon, and whereas access remains responsible for maintaining compliance with laws its policies and contractual agreement with the board concerning personally identifiable information and disclosure of the same. Second. Mr. President, on that, uh, any of the data that's collected, there's no recognizable um, student names or, or adult names. It's really just raw data they want and they're using it for purposes, state purposes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Item, item 18, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the following personnel and student trips, A and B, by consent action. Kropaski? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Item 19, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the appointment of Rory Titeman, e EMIS coordinator, eight years experience on the administrative salary schedule, effective 12-26-2018. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Uh, so the board had an opportunity to miss, meet Rory earlier. Uh, for him and his family, congratulations to him. He had baby uh, boy twins. So he's home with the boy twins. Um, now he couldn't make the board meeting, and his uh, apologies for not being here tonight. But he was with the board earlier. Congratulations, Rory. Item 20. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the following Mahoning Valley COG employee in accordance with the AVR COG agreement. Thomas Lenton, <coughs> administrator on special assignment, 21 additional days through the end of January 2019. So moved. Second. Take the vote. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? Uh, President, 
I think 18 was um, skipped over. I don't think there's a line for a roll call on there. There's the uh, personnel items for the consent agenda. It was coupled with student trips. It was with student trips? It was okay. coupled. Sorry about that. Yeah, I added in verbally, I just added yeah. student trips A and B. Okay. So hey, a, sorry about that. A is personnel, B was student trips. Okay. Item 21, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the contractual start date for the transportation supervisor to be July 1, 2018, instead of August 1, 2018. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mrs. Kapaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Item 22, upon the recommendation of the, to direct the superintendent to notify the Ohio Department of Education that the Austintown Local School District will again be an open enrollment district in the 2019-2020 school year. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mr. Mock? Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mrs. Karpaski? No. Mr. Porter? No. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. President, uh, since the board has passed that now, I just want to inform the community that we will be closing open enrollment as of April 30th. So we'll have open enrollment for existing students during the month of February, and then open enrollment for um, all new students will be March and April, and April 30th will be the deadline. Thank you. Item 23, approve the revision of board policy JEB to state that any child who is five years of age on or before August 1st is eligible to enroll in kindergarten. So moved. Second. I'd like to make a comment before we take the vote in regards to moving of the kindergarten date. Uh, since 2001, Ohio districts have had the choice between two cutoff dates for children to enter kindergarten. Some districts have had a cutoff of September 30th, the date before the law change. Others require to be five by August 1st. Districts are about evenly split on the date. Well, I am in the school of thought of letting our families bring their child to us at an early age. This gives teachers more time to work with our children who are having problems. With the later cutoff date, it would provide every academic intervention, support, and opportunity that we possibly could give to work with those students to get them started with an academic experience. The later date would allow us to support children in the classroom who are at the edge of kindergarten readiness instead of making them wait a whole year. So many of our families are facing financial challenges and the cost of preschool is high. It is my hope when the children do come to us, we would be able to provide them with an in-house preschool for our children, which might be an early fives program, and we could recommend that growth year with us. And I am happy to say that we are having a conversation about <coughs> doing that very thing, but I just wanted to express my opinion before we take the vote. I just wanted to point out that a lot of thought went into this. There was 41 kids that were affected, would have been affected last year. 37 of those 41 needed intervention. Four of them came to, to kindergarten not even potty trained. So that is one of the reasons that we really went into moving the date to August 1st. Um, they don't know their ABCs, they can't count the 10, uh, they can't spell their name. Uh, so there's, there's some more than just, we didn't just change the date out of without some good thought on it. So I just want to let you know that. Thank you, Harold. Take the vote. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mrs. Mock? No. Mr. Porter? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? No. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. 
Item 24, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the revision of board policy IGDK, interscholastic and extracurricular activities eligibility, as follows. High school, grades 9 through 12, as a condition for the privilege of participating in interscholastic extracurricular activities, a student must have attained a minimum GPA of 2.0 on a 4.0 grading scale in the immediately preceding grading period. Please note, attaining a minimum grade point average of a 2.0 on a 4.0 grading scale in the immediately preceding grading period is in addition to the OHSAA requirement of receiving passing grades in a minimum, minimum of five courses in the immediately preceding grading period. <coughs> a student enrolled in the first grading period of the ninth grade after advancement from the eighth grade must have received passing grades in a minimum of five courses in the immediately preceding grading period and must have attained a minimum GPA of 2.0 on a 4.0 grading scale in the immediately preceding grading period. For middle school, grades seven and eight, as a condition for the privilege of participating in interscholastic extracurricular activities, a student must have attained a minimum GPA of 2.0 on a 4.0 grading scale in the immediately preceding grading period and receive passing grades in a minimum of five courses in the immediately preceding grading period. Mrs. Kapowski? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Item 25, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the adoption, readoption, revision of the following board policies. IJA career advising, IGD co-curricular and extracurricular, JFCJ, Weapons in the Schools, JG Student Discipline, DJFR Purchasing Procedures. Second. Take the vote. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Item 26, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the athletic student parent handbook, which now includes the revisions made for IGDK interscholastic and extracurricular activities eligibility. Second. Take the vote. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Dr. Ritchie. Yes. Item 27, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve a building use permit for Mahoning Valley Skywarn to use the Fitch Auditorium for the purpose of tornado spotting training with the meteorologist from the Cleveland National Weather Service at a date and time to be determined during the month of March or April 2019. Building use fees will be waived for this community service training. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Item 28, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the academic calendar for the 2019-20 school year as presented. So moved. Second. Take the vote. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. I think families and teachers will be very happy with the upcoming calendar. Item 29, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the following board subcommittees as follows. Financial oversight, myself and Dr. Ritchie. Administrative oversight, myself and Mr. Porter. Board policy development, Ms. Krimpaski, Mrs. Mock, Mrs. Krimpaski. Okay. Community Relations, Mrs. Krimpaski and Dr. Ritchie, and Board of Education Development, Mr. Porter and Mrs. Mock. So 
Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Item 30, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the resolution to enter into settlement and direct payment agreement between the Board of Education of the Austin Town Local School District and Cole BE Portfolio 1 LLC, effective December 11, 2018. And whereas Cole BE Portfolio 1 LLC agrees to make direct payment to the Board, of the Board for settlement of property tax payments for tax years 2017, 18, and 19. So moved. Second. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Thank you, Board. This is a, uh, they were asking for a tax revision saying that their tax uh, bill was too high. So we went and negotiated with them and this, they came back with a deal that um, we both can live with and that's what this payment's about. Item 31, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the agreement to partner with Kent State University's College Credit Plus program for the upcoming 2019-20 academic year. Mrs. Mock? Yes. Mr. Sherwood? Yes. Mrs. Kropaski? Yes. Mr. Porter? Yes. Dr. Ritchie? Yes. Okay, no one has signed up for the public comment segment two. Anything specific, Mr. Gazzoni? Tonight? Not this time. No. Vince? Any board comments? Motion to recess to executive session. Okay. Thanks, everyone. You gotta take a vote. Oh, take the vote. I'm sorry. No action after, correct? No action. No action. This is for um, specific to employment. Employment. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Dr. Ritchie. Yes. Mrs. Mock. Yes. Mrs. Kropaski. Yes. Mr. Porter. Yes. Mr. Sherwood. Yes. in association with Austin Town Local Schools and Austin Town Township.